Hey guys, today I have 20 things you may not have known you can do in Final Cut. Some of these are things I use all the time. Some of them are things I know about, but I never think to use them often. And I'm trying to remind myself, and a couple of them are things that are brand new that I just learned, including my absolute favorite one, which is going to be last in this video. So stick around for that. You know, you might know some of these tricks, but I guarantee you, you're gonna learn something new in this video. Let's just dive right into it. This first one is all about the color picker and let's say the color board. You know you can add a color mask, so if I wanted to, let's say, boost up the saturation of just this pink iPad holder in this shot, I can grab with the eyedropper in my frame and select that pink iPad and boost up the saturation. But watch what happens to this little girl's skin tone when I make that iPad look really hot pink. You see the splotchiness I'm getting here in her skin. If we grab that eyedropper, hold down the option key on our keyboard, we can deselect the pinks in her skin. And now look, I can play with the color in the iPad, but her skin tone remains exactly the same. That option key modifier with the eyedropper is amazing. All right, number two is that you can import just ranges of clips. Did you know you could do this? Here in the import window, I don't have to import an entire range. I can just select part of a clip and import that. This comes in super handy if you have like, I don't know, a production manager who always forgets to stop recording between takes. The next feature you may not have known about is searching for fonts. Now, there is not a search field here in Final Cut for fonts, but if you select this dropdown and then just type the first letter of the font you're looking for, your selection will jump to that section of the font menu. My next tip is all about working with slip edits. By the way, guys, if you see some of these really cool B-roll shots uh, that I'm working with, they are from ArtGrid. If you're curious, not sponsored, just want to let you know that I have been using ArtGrid a lot lately and I'm super impressed with the quality of their shots. A lot of them are 6K even, so check out ArtGrid. I'll link to it down below if you want to check it out. So we know to make a slip edit, you need to hit the T key on your keyboard. You get this cursor and you can slip your shot, but you see what happens? The connected clip is moving along with my first B-roll shot here. If you wanna avoid that and maintain the placement of your connected clip, just hold down the tilde key as you scroll and look what happens. I can slip my clip from the primary storyline and then my connected clip stays put. That's super helpful. Have you ever grabbed a clip out of your browser and hovered it over, let's say this connected clip and released, and you get this menu here, replace, replace from start, but you see this option here, add to audition. Have you ever wondered what that means? I don't see a lot of people talking about this on YouTube, so I just wanted to cover it in case you weren't sure what that meant. Let's select that add to audition option. And what we get here with this clip is this little spotlight icon at the top of my clip. Let's double click it, and then look what happens. I can toggle between these two clips. Add to Audition was designed to let you easily switch between two different, let's say, B-roll options for a client. Maybe they're sitting next to you and this way you can kind of just toggle between them and show them the different B-roll options. It's also awesome for color correction. You can apply the same clip twice to an audition with two different color correction profiles. So you can kind of switch back and forth and decide which one you like better. Add to Audition is a really cool feature that I don't reach for often, but I'm gonna try to be more mindful in using it. Here's another one for you. This here is a compound clip. Again, all these shots I got off of ArtGrid. Now let's say you've created a compound clip and you decide that you don't want it to be a compound clip anymore for whatever reason. You could always open up that compound clip, select all of these clips, and then paste them back into your main timeline. But did you know you could just easily break these apart as well? So what you just need to do is go up to the clip menu here and select break apart clip items. You can see that shift command G is the shortcut for this. And now those compound clips have all been restored to individual clips in your storyline. The one thing I would warn you about doing this is that once you apply a filter or effect to that compound clip, when you break it apart, that filter disappears. So unless you work a lot with adjustment layers, this might not be that great of an option for you. Get your pen and paper guys, cause this is definitely one you're going to want to write down. You see this 
connected clip here where the connection point is, it's kind of almost toward the middle of the clip. If I wanted to move it to the top of the clip, watch this. I just press option and command at the same time and then click in my clip where I want that new connection point to be. And look, it's jumped to the front of my clip. One weird thing about this is that if you have caps lock on, it doesn't seem to work. All right, this next one is one of the ones that I just learned that kind of blew my mind. You know how you can use this wheel here in your video inspector to spin objects around in your viewer? Let's reset that. Watch this. If I hold down the shift key as I spin that wheel, my clip rotates in 45 degree increments. Isn't that wild? I never knew about that one. Thank you to Mark Spencer for telling me about that. Here's another one I wanna show you guys. I can drag in a PSD file. This is a Photoshop file into my library and add it to my timeline. And then if I double click the clip in my timeline, look, all of my different layers are here from Photoshop and I can turn on or off those elements individually or add filters to them individually. This is a great workflow with PSD files. All right, here's one for you. Have you ever noticed that you can modify the tracking in your text inspector, but you can't keyframe the tracking, so you can't have that look where the letters gather in? You actually can do that in Final Cut. Let me show you how. Just head over to your Titles and Generators sidebar, grab this one here, Custom, drop it into your timeline. I'm gonna queue up my playhead to the very beginning of the clip. And then over here in my Title Inspector, I can crank up the in tracking and let's say the in spread and play it back. And there is your gather in behavior. I like to just add a little cross dissolve at the beginning of that. And there you go. That's how it's done in Final Cut. Here's another great little shortcut you might want to know. A lot of times different transitions will have different default lengths when you apply them to your clips. So if you want to make them all the same length together at the same time, just select them all and hit Control D and type in a new value and they will all snap to that length. Another feature you might not know that Final Cut offers is that they give you a lot of different sound effects for free if you know how to access them. To access them, you just need to head up to Final Cut Pro at the top left of your screen and select this guy here, download additional content, and then just update. I'm already up to date here, so your screen might look a little bit different than mine if you have not downloaded that additional content. And then to access those sound effects, just go to the photos, videos, and audio sidebar here. And under sound effects, these are all the different sound effects and music clips that Final Cut gives you for free. All right, before we get to my next tip, if you're enjoying this video, if you're learning something, and I have to believe that you are, let me know, give me that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell so you never miss a future upload. My next tip is a bit of a hidden feature in Final Cut that has to do with text. If you open your text inspector when you've got a title in your timeline, select this little drop down menu here that says normal, and look, there's all these different 2D and 3D styles that are preset for you. And then you can customize them from there. This next one is a tip you see me use all the time in my motion tutorials. You might be familiar with a shot like this. This is the Apple Motion interface. And let's say I wanna show you guys something in the timeline. I've actually pre-programmed effects so that I can zoom into different parts of this frame. It's so easy. So let me just show you what the end result is first. Here is my custom effects bin motion tutorial moves. Let's say I wanted to zoom into the timeline on this shot. Instead of keyframing it, I only had to keyframe it once and save it as a preset. And this is how I edit really quickly here in Final Cut Pro, those tutorials. Let me just show you how to do that if you wanted to create your own preset. Let's say we wanted to zoom into the canvas here in Motion. I'm just going to select my clip, head on over to my video inspector. Let's make a keyframe for scale and position, and then head a little bit further down my timeline, make two more keyframes here, and scale up and reposition to where I want my endpoint to be. And I'm actually gonna make this a linear move. And then head on over here to the Save Effects preset button in your inspector window, and it will ask you which attributes do you wanna bring into this new effect. You can uncheck or check the ones that you wanna apply. And then here's the really important thing. Do you wanna maintain the timing or do you want it to stretch to fit? I personally prefer maintaining timing on most of the effects that I create. I don't want them to stretch 
depending on the length of my clip, I always want them to remain consistent. You wanna give your effect a name here. Whatever you put here in this name is going to be whatever the effect is called here in your effects bin. And then under category, that's gonna determine where it lives down here in your menu of effects to create a new category. Just hit this drop down and select new category. And then you can type in the name of a new category and it will appear down here in your effects bin. If you're like me and you do a lot of the same moves over and over, or you want to create a custom effect, you know, you want to reach for a lot in the future, whether that be a color grade or some other kind of treatment to a video, this is so helpful. Here's another great hack for you. I've got skimming turned on, which means that wherever I move my cursor, I can see whatever's going on in my timeline. But see, this connected clip is covering these two bottom clips here, you might notice. Watch this, if I head up to view and then select clip skimming, the shortcut is option command S. Watch what happens. If I bring my cursor over this bottom clip here, I can see what's going on under my giraffes. That is called clip skimming and it's nice to have that view. Now, if you watched my Final Cut Shortcuts video, you know that if you hit L on your keyboard, you can play forward in real time. And if you hit L twice, you can play back in high speed. But how do you play back in slow speed? Let me show you this one. Let's cue up our playhead again to our elephant here. And then what I'm going to do is hold down the K key and the L key at the same time. And now I'm playing in slow speed. If I wanted to play in reverse, hold down that K key and hit the J key, and we're going backward in slow motion. This next one you probably have seen me do before, but if you haven't, it is worth noting. I just think this is such a great feature. Hold down the Option key and click and drag, and you get a duplicate of your clip so much faster than copying and pasting. Let's head up to the browser for our next tip. You can see here, if I hit Command A to select all of my clips. I have a lot of selected ranges. If I wanted to clear out all these ranges, so easy, head on up to Mark and clear selected ranges or select Option X. And now all of my ranges have been cleared. For my next trick, let's check out this current project we're working in. It's called Final Cut Tricks. You can see it here on my browser. And down below in my timeline, you can see we've got a few clips and then a compound clip connected to those clips. Let me show you something interesting we can do here. Let's head up to our browser, select that project, right click and hit snapshot project. And now we've got a snapshot. It's pretty much a duplicate of that original project. Let me open it up so you can see. You can see here, this is the snapshot. But what makes snapshotting a project different from duplicating is compound clips. Watch what happens here. If I open up my compound clip, and let's say replace these giraffes with this mountaintop shot and then head back to my primary storyline. You can see here that that mountaintop shot has been included in my compound clip, but watch this. If I go back to my original project here, Final Cut Tricks, the compound clip is the same as it originally was with the giraffes. So when you make a snapshot of a project in Final Cut, you can change what's inside your compound clips without affecting other timelines. Now to show you the difference, let me go back up to my original project, duplicate the project. Now it's called Final Cut Tricks 1. Open that up, open up that compound clip, and let's put in the city shot instead of these giraffes. Go back. Now this is our duplicate project. There's our city shot. Let's go back to our original project. And here in the compound clip is that city shot. So the difference between duplicate projects and snapshot projects is that you can change elements in compound clips in snapshots and not affect all the rest of your timelines. That can come in so handy when you're working on different versions of a project. Snapshot it, don't duplicate it. And now it's time for my absolute favorite Final Cut trick. This one was shown to me very recently by Nick Haraz at Boris FX. And I don't think a lot of people know about this one and I cannot wait to show it to you. We're gonna start with this beautiful shot of this elephant I got off of Art Grid. And you probably know, let's say if we, head over to the blurs in our effects bin, that if you hover your cursor over the effect you're thinking about applying, you can kind of see what that effect is gonna do to that shot, but watch this. If I hold down my option key, okay, and then I'm gonna push my cursor to the right, watch what happens in my viewer 
that elephant gets more and more and more blurry. I can change how affected the clip is right down here in the effects bin. And then when I find a blur that I like, let's say right here, I just double click and look, the amount is set here in my video inspector to the amount I selected in the bin. And of course I can change it if I want, but that's a really quick way to apply effects without having to go over to your video inspector. You can do it right in the bin. Tell me you did not know that trick and that is amazing. I'm sure you did not know that one. I'd be really impressed if you did. You guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I picked out some other videos I think you might really enjoy. And of course I'll see you again.